welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Stephen. Today's episode is about the Normandy Company, the more modern Normandy Company that was owned by LeBlanc from the mid 20th century until their demise as they evolved into a noble for. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe, like, and share afterwards. What I have with me right here is my Normandy 4 clarinet. I bought it in 1978. I remember I took $400 up to Royal Music in Royal Oak. That was the music store owned by Robert Koff, who was also the president of WT Armstrong Corporation. And he also was the importer of the Cowworth horns that were labeled with his name on it. I told him I wanted a clarinet. I was the saxophone at that time they knew. And he came out with this, minus the mouthpiece there, Normandy 4 clarinet. All tuned up, ready to go. Bought it on the spot, walked out with it. And I've had it ever since. Normandy is a student line of clarinets that, that LeBlanc had. The Normandy line was a student line. Noble was the intermediate line. And LeBlanc was the professional line. One of the major differences was the tone holes of the Normandies were a lot smaller. And it was easy for smaller young fingers to cover up the tone holes. It's a very good doubling instrument too. It's a large bore. And the small tone holes let people easily cover the tone holes no matter the size of your fingers. What we're going to do is we're going to go to my website, clarinetperfection.com, at least the one that's on a laptop, and we're going to review the information that's on there because it contains a lot of the history of Normandy. Okay, once again, this is mostly from clarinetperfection.com. On top of here, I have a little quick links of information. We're just going to go straight down it. Noble used to be a separate company that worked with LeBlanc until LeBlanc bought him in 1978. Of course, as I mentioned, they cooperated with LeBlanc as they were the entry level. Tonal wise, you find out this era of the Normandy 4, Normandy 8, Normandy 10s, they had very little quality differences between them. They had different price areas, they had different price levels, and different keywords here and there. And of course, a minor evolution over time of a few things. <clears throat> Other than the Ebonite, Normandy 4, 8, 10, and 12, they also had special models. Some had silver plated keys, of course, Ebonite barrels, and the Buffet Selmer type keywork. After the buyout, I believe mostly Norm, the no after the buyout, I put on here. Mostly only Normandy bores existed. <clears throat> the bore is identical to the Noble 40 and 45 lines, which gives a good full tone. Nice thick wood in the, in the bodies and bells and tenons. And um, it has small tonals, as I mentioned. Now, Normandy also had a 5 and 7 model. The 7 had a buffet summer type keyword. And the five had inline trill keys and a plastic barrel and bell. Since Selma USA's purchase of G. LeBlanc USA, <clears throat> the Normandy line seemed to have been dropped, and the Normandy 4 became the Noble 4, which I believe probably six years ago itself was dropped. Now, a long time ago, no, the Normandy lineup included soprano clarinets and B flat, E flat, A, and C, alto and bass clarinets too, oboes and flutes. But this is just about the soprano clarinets. Many times you'll see the Normandies will be stamped made by Noble. There's a lot of sharing amongst workers and bodies there and key work. But jumping down now to the original Normandy, the original Normandy was basically referred to as the original Normandy, basically. It had share posts for the throat G sharp and A key, like you would find in early, really early Selma Paris horns and pre R13 buffets, and inline jump trill keys. I have some pictures here of it. We can see the inline trill keys. If you look at the adjuster screw, it's actually built into the 
arm of the um, a flat key here. And you have, this is a shared post throat keys. You see there are three posts. The bottom right one here is shared between the two keys. That's why it's called the shared throat post key. You got three posts for two keys versus more modern design, you got four posts for two keys. Here's another picture of the back end of the upper key. We just see the inline keys once again. Now the early one, they the two top trill keys, I believe shared uh, mechanism here. Last picture, the lower half. Looks like a Normandy. <clears throat> We're gonna move on. I want to mention something real quickly. This is the student line clarinet. What you'll see if you look at the lower joint sliver key, you see it goes perpendicular to the other keys here. This doesn't allow much adjustment. If you look at the upper joint. Uh, side key, you see there's a long thing and it bends over. That bending allows for the key to be bent for easier, quick adjustment for opening up or even closing the bending of the trill key there. And you see most professional horns are designed this way, the long curve of the key versus something coming straight off of the other key. <clears throat> the Normandy Special was a cost-saving effort equipped with the original buffet style trill keys. It also had the shared G sharp and A throw keys and it had a special stamp above the Normandy shield on the upper joint. You can read about it right here as you go through it. I'll show some pictures real quickly. See the special on the top here above the Normandy and there's a France stamp on it also. Close look at the instrument. From above, standard Normandy. You'll see the adjusting screw on the throat key here is pushed a little bit more forward, a little bit less work. And the bell just has a Normandy stamp on it. Upper joint. <clears throat> then there was the Resotone, which was a plastic clarinet, featured buffet style trill keys. It says they're a short lived model. <clears throat> and by 1958, the Normandy 14 Resotone was introduced. What it looks like. You see the throw keys are in separate posts at this point. Let me zoom in a bit. This is what I mean. They're not sharing this one post between the two. They're now separate. If you ever hear that mentioned. Back under the clarinet. And up on top here, we have made by Noble. Example. <clears throat> Next, we have a transitional Normandy, which was an evolution of Woody Bot, which was an evolution of the wooden body Normandy. It was considered the transitional model. Features the same inline trill keys mounted to three sets of posts as the original Normandy, but separate mounting posts for the throw keys. And it had Examples are known to have composite and wooden bells with the narrow Normandy shield and it made by Noble at the top. I don't have a picture of that. Next year, the Normandy 5, 7, and 10. These came out in the mid 1950s. Similar keywork as earlier ones. 
Some may have composite bell and barrels. Version of the five was equipped with composite tone bright barrel and bell. Seven had a wooden barrel composite bell and 10 featured a wooden barrel and bell. All at the same type of nickel plated keyword. The Model 5 disappeared in 1961. Replaced by the Model 7 with the Tone Bright Composite Barrel. 7 is gone by 1966. The early 7 and 10s were not stamped with the model number, but by 1966, the Model 10 was marked with 10 on the upper joint. 1962 brochure of the 7 was at $172.50. The Model 10 was at $182.50. $10 difference. 1966, number 10 carried a list price of $189.50. Uh, serial number analysis showed the Model 10 remained in production until at least 1967. Here's some pictures of that. Up for more joint. The Model 10, snap above the Normandy emblem. More pictures of a one in the case. Regular bell, the regular barrel. Normandy 10. Normandy 5P, which was the late 1950s. This had plateau, this had plateau keys throughout. I had a uh, 5P at one time. Um, if, if at all you use any thick cork on it or thick pads on it, it would sound stuffy. You really had to work with thin pads and thin cork to make it sound more full. It doesn't sound stuffy or flat in places. Anyways, in the 5P in 1960, it had a list price of $159.50. And later on, it was upgraded with a wooden bell at a $200 list price. <clears throat> By 1964, the 5P had been replaced by the Model 10P. Let's take a look at some quick pictures. You can see the thumb hole is filled in. The upper joint, you can see all the ring keys are solid, filled in. Kind of like with the flutes did, you know, you, you have student flutes that are not open hole, you know, open hole and closed hole flutes. One thing I should mention too is if you look at the upper joint, you'll see the trill key guide here is still a flat sheet metal piece. Lower joint, nothing special there. That one actually had a repair, I believe. Uh, these metal tenons are repair. So that's the plateau model. There was a um, advertisement I have here about it. You can take a look at it yourself. New model for beginners, cover keys. Next are the Normandy 14. By 1958, Normandy 14 Resitone had been introduced as a plastic Normandy. They had a wide shield. Basically, the shield got a little bit wider, basically. It could be obtained with black, gold, red, or white plastic body. I have not seen any of those, but that's what an ad had. Black, gold, red, or white. We've seen those in a lot of other uh, Selmy or say clarinets. 14 p The Normandy 14P, 1960, Rosatone was in production. This plastic clarinet had plateau keys again. Made in France, equipped with clay style trill keys. Three sets of posts. Da, 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 da. You see the information there. Price list in 1960, 149.50. These are kind of fuzzy pictures. Plateau keyword. Normandy 6, based in 1961, this was produced with a 
wooden body. This price $162.50. The Normandy 140p. After 1961, it was made of plastic once again. Uh, nothing really special there. Price of $179. I told key work in this one. You see some of the keywords. You see this is like offset keys down here on the upper joint. Um, for small hands, if you depending upon your fingers and the length of your fingers, the offset key work helps a lot. When I play flute, I can actually only play an offset E flute. I can't play a straight flute. I it just my fingers don't let me. So I understand the problem all too well. Ten P was another plateau clarinet with inline trill keys. Two forty-five. And normally eight, replacing from model six. Face style trill keys, one hundred seventy-five dollars. Normally, the normally two eight Steubens model with a double mechanism for the register key. These are very interesting clarinets. You also find them in the Blay and in the LeBlanc line. <clears throat> so you see the Steuben's circular emblem here under the Normandy line. And you can see some of the mechanisms here. If you press the register vent separate from the thumb hole, that activates one set of keys with the thumb hole or just the thumb hole activates another set of key work. I should have a uh, video just about the Steuben's mechanism. I have a lot more information about it. Normandy 7 was reintroduced sometime after 1966 with a wooden barrel and bell. And then the Normandy 4, which is probably the most mass produced model of all, introduced in 1969. I bought mine in what was it, 1978, was it? Nine years later. Until it was phased out in the mid 2000s. They played key work, inline trill keys, wooden body barrel bell. Some more information here. Early ones had a needle spring for C sharp, G sharp key and trill keys, as shown here in this one picture. This one has a look at that. Instead of a needle spring, a little round spring. Pretty cool. Other clarinets had this too. I can't remember what models had them. You have to be careful when you work on them because if you don't know it's there, it's just going to go point and disappear somewhere in your workbench. <clears throat> There's a Normandy 4 special with a composite bell. Here's a Normandy Resil Knight emblem here, or Resil Tone USA. More pictures here. This one's kind of fuzzy. Anyways, the Normandy 4 emblem here. This is the regular Normandy 4 emblem with a 4 in the shield on the top. First turn to Noble 4. Here's the last version Normandy 4 that had this bell with the ring around it. That said LeBlanc France on it. Normandy 8 emblem had an 8 with a circle in it. 10 emblem here, 10 above the shield. 12 or 12 above the shield. And there's also Liberty Noble, which was a Normandy clarinet, late 2005. The music group had a special brand of instruments called the Liberty. They include Armstrong flutes, Bach trumpets, Noble clarinets, Bach trombones, which, well, Noble clarinets actually rebranded Normandy clarinet. Somewhere else, tenor saxophones. They did that again recently with a uh, Omega uh, series of instruments which were not to be confused with 
the Omega clarinet, so the Selmer center tone and Selmer Rousse clarinet, they had a line of Omega saxophones, trombones, trumpets, and clarinets. And I have a serial number list on the website. I actually got this, I remember, um, I think it was 98, I was looking for the history of my Normandy 4 clarinet. <clears throat> and I was calling LeBlanc USA, trying to find out when mine was made. And when I called during the day, he got the regular call center. And one person told me they think a lady has it, but I have to call before they open. So like the next day, I called like half an hour before they actually opened. And they got this old lady. She says, yeah, she has the serial number list for it with the Normandy, Noble, and LeBlanc clarinets. And uh, she faxed them over to me. Uh, that's when fax machines existed. <laughs> Anyways, I think I have the original copy of the fax. I'll try to post it at the end if anyone's interested. But they gave me the serial numbers. I have them. Then I noticed the serial numbers propagate throughout the internet after that point. And I was also collecting serial numbers from all over the place, Salma, Faye, wherever I could get them at that point, and built up the website. But as you can see, all the serial numbers here. In fact, I even mentioned at the bottom from Nicely at Julia Block. Anyways, I want to thank you for listening today over this history of Normandy clarinets. Any questions or comments, please put them down below. I know I went kind of fast there, but, you know, I don't want to have an hour-long video here. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share. You got to love knowledge, got to love life, got to love clarinets too, right? That's what this is all about. We'll see you next time.